those magnificent men in their flying machines. They go up to the above, they go down to the above. Okay, so this is the undercarriage. So point here. this is the plan to the undercarriage. This is pretty basic. There's a few ways of doing this. I mean, I'm doing it, like I said, to the layman's way possible. So if you haven't got the right tools, there's other ways around it. So you, if you've got a heat gun and you get a metal bar, like one up just here earlier, let's pretend this is your bar. I mean, you can mark it with a permanent marker, right? Heat the bar, well, you won't mark it. Just heat the bar up roughly where you want it and then bend it, it'll bend easier. But if you haven't got the means, like I don't have a hot gun. So what I do is the old brute force way, as you can see in the vise. And I find it easier because you've marked it with your permanent marker and then you brute force bend it, bend it, keep bending it with a cloth so it's easier on your hand. So once you've bent it into a reasonable shape, keep going back to the picture uh, to get the right angle and you'll see the results. Okay, one. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but that's close enough. And then there. And then obviously if you've got any lengths, you dremel them off with a little blade, you know, cut it off with a dremel or hacksaw if you haven't got a dremel and then sand them down to shape. And then the same applies, so I wouldn't, with, it, with a crossbar, I always leave extra length, because that way, when you've got to put your wheels on, you know, you've got excess amount of room where you put your collets between the wheels. But we'll come to that another day when it comes. So they're ready now to go on the fuse. Okay. Right, well, this is the UC we're doing. Okay, and in this particular model, it goes into the front of the firewall, so it's bolted in. This is just temporary bolts. So I can get it lined up with the wing. Okay, so I'm just back a bit. And it's cut like that there, looks a bit fierce, but you need to have room for it to lift up so you can get the wing in and out when you're, you know, putting the plane together on the field. So that's, and it's set at an angle like that anyway on the plan. What's your eye? And um, so that's that bit. Okay, you can see this light. Okay, over oh, there in. They were fun to put in. Anyway, and you won't see any of this in because obviously the sheeting's going over it. So it's, it's hidden by the sheeting. And then on the wing, obviously on the wing, you've got to have the plate for the other side of the undercarriage to go to. Okay, so that's uh, just cut out of scrap ply and bolsters, white PVA in the sides, and then super glued there to give the strengthening. Okay, so that's basically it. If I turn it over, you can see. See? Not a bit that. And another little trick, whilst I'm at it, I'm, um, excuse the seasickness, air sickness. I did the brackets right because the brackets weren't the right size for the bar, the undercarriage bar. There's a bit of off-cut scrap. Just get a Dremel and you Dremel it right to the right width, so it just clips in. See? And that's how you cheat round that. Guess in case you haven't got the right ones. Okay. This is how I do it because I can't weld or solder and don't. You know, I'm doing it so other people are in my predicament. Excuse me, can see what I mean. Okay. So. Basically, how you do it is as you see it, just off cuts a bit of, bit of cuts of uh, plywood to use them as clamps to hold the wires together, ready for you to put this in. So your axle bar, right, make sure there's enough, I mean there's plenty more room to make sure you've got a length to put your wheels on and your collets and also you've got to allow for the webbing it's going to be wrapped around there uh, at a later stage. Okay, so it's in there and the glue I use is rapid steel, which this stuff is amazing and it really is amazing, all right. It says four minutes, but I always leave it about 20 minutes, just so, and look at that, it's not going to move, okay? So that is only tacked on like you would do if you were welding it, just tack it on, because now I'm going to wrap it with baling wire, amazing baling wire, which will be the next video. So you wrap it gently round, and these little pegs here, these little clips that I've made, they are there basically like it shows you on here, if you follow my finger, they're, that's to allow you, they'll go on, so you can wrap, they'll, they'll sit, and get rid of the camera, they will sit in there, like so, after the wrapping's gone, and I allow you to put the webbing on, so it's got somewhere to hold against it before we put the wheels on. Okay, so that's that's that bit there, and that's basically it. And then once you've wrapped it with the baling wire, just enough to hold it. Okay, and then once you've got your baling wire in, you put some more of the rapid epoxy on, just to make sure it's all sealed and it will never move. Trust me, I've, this has been tried and tested theory because on all my other aeroplanes I've had a 10 pound plane land on, uh, literally land on this and not a problem at all. So it's just, as it says, it's like rapid weld. So it's steel. So that'll do it, okay? So this is uh, undercarriage again. Um, so we're on our 
to do the actual imitation fairings on the UC. So basically, as usual, put a bit of tape over the plan so that doesn't hurt the plan when you go and mark it out. Get a piece of the blue paper I showed you in previous videos underneath the print carbon paper. And a bit of a, get it on the old, uh, I used, I believe I've got it here still, so piece of this, this will do it, this is wide enough. And it gets six, seven mil bolster, soft bolster, because you've got to sand it, so I'll make it nice and soft. So basically, you, you draw out the shape, put it underneath and draw it out, both of them. Cut out, pardon me, cut out two of each, obviously. And then, once you've cut them out, as you can see, I've just put this roughly together so you can see what it's going to look like. New epoxy resin these in. Okay. Now, <coughs> the reason I've, I've epoxied them in, they've got to be sanded to shape as well. Oh, it's very hard to do this one then. Okay, so they're quite solid as they are. Once the covering goes on, put a bit of wire around one. If You, you could thread it through to the holes and thread it through to give it a top. But really, to be honest with you, once the covering is wrapped, because this particular plane, it seems like it's wrapped around like around the actual uh, fairings, so okay, excuse me, I've got a bit of a cold <laughs> anyway, so these have got to be sanded to shape this bit here has to be sanded quite well in because the sheeting going over it, so you won't see it in a way so that'll be handy to get it in looking right as long as the inside looks right, that's what matters and that's basically it, now the last piece of the puzzle, as they say is the bottom wing as I call it, but the actual axle it's covered with a piece of wood. Now, I've got a friend now, thankfully, uh, they're going to sh I need the picture of it, because I haven't really got a decent sized picture to have a good look at it, to detail it. So, um, that's why it's left off at the moment, so I can find a good picture. And that will be more or less the same fitting as that, but it will be grooved in, depending on how it looks. So that will be another video. So the next stage is now to sand it, to shape on there. Okay. Hey, this is the undercarriage. Okay, on this. So I thought I'd give you the car. This is the real one that you're looking at now. So you might get a bit air sick because I'm gonna have to pan it around to get the camera. But this is an order. So that that was obviously the main axle and a bit the fairing that goes behind it. Um, that's on the real one, and the, you move it a little bit, and you get your legs the same. So if we just right, a bit. Right. I mean, right. So in. So that's the finished product. So that there, the, the top part, that is just painted on, like you know, to give the imitation of the black axle metal at the bottom of the axle. Okay, that little piece that is sticking out has to. Oh, I'll, I'll demonstrate with this. That little piece there. Here, this piece here is for when you put your webbing round between that and the wheels. This piece is, this is just paint, okay. Obviously to disguise the axle, the metal that goes around the bottom of the fairings as well. So we'll come on to this now, we'll come on to these, these pieces here. Okay, so, find the camera. Right, I'll zoom out a bit. Apologise for all this, but I've only got one hand. It's very difficult. Right, so if we go back up there. Right. How I achieve that is you basically just cut your strip out, you got your strip, you cut your strip out and then you just tack it on with your heat gun in the inside and you wrap it around just like it is on the real plane. You wrap it around so forth all the way up, even if you get a gap, it doesn't matter about the gap because when you come back down and rewrap it the other side it will cover the gaps like I've done there. Okay, and then you this piece here, I'm just trying to keep it in the camera. So no. Right, this piece here, this is your fairing that goes on the back. That'll be epoxy resin on. So that it should be, is that in view? Yeah. So that'll be epoxy resin on. And then you've got wires that'll go in, but that's on another video, as you can see on the bit, the real plane. So that'll be epoxy resin on, ready to be drilled. And that one's the same, that's wrapped individually. And that's made out of a piece of uh, just box standard angle, old scrap angle, which came in handy, I can see it on there, can you? Yeah. Okay, and then cut it down to the size, using the picture on the real thing as a guide. And then once, and then you groove, groove out the middle bit with a Dremel, so you've got, it goes around, wraps around the bar, which does come in handy. And then you cover it 
in single strips like so. One like that. You could wrap it like you do on the um, variants, but I did it individually to give the same effect as it looks on the real plane. Okay, and that's how it goes. And that is the undercarriage, more or less there. Okay, I hope that helps. I'm sorry if the camera, if I'm in the way of my own, but you know, it gets a bit awkward. So if I do this, just um, so you get a rough idea. So you can see how it sits now. So obviously I've got to drill a couple of holes one side of side to put the cross wires in to stabilise the UC. And we're there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we're addressing the uh, strengthening wires under the undercarriage. So, so to get that effect, I've uh, done this. As you can see the quires are in. You just basically you drill two holes on either side, make sure it's level, like so. And then a bit of piano wire, which is quite handy. And then you bend it with a pliers to 90 degrees. All right, and then you just go in it and epoxy the resin in this side. Okay, because after it's done, you can just paint it. But you won't see it anyway when the webbing goes on. Okay, and then on, when it's nice and bone dry, that side you dremel off. All right, a little dremel and dremel it off. Because it's not going to move with that from there, you know, and buff it a bit so it's got a little bundle on it. But that way you've got them bottom bits in. And then the next bit is to do the uprights. That'll be fun. Okay, well, that's a quick video, but it helps. Right. So don't forget to do it on there. Let's see that. Okay. Okay, the wheels. Just sprayed up the wheels. Basically, just cut off pieces of card or paper and put it in between the tire and the wheel rim and spray it. So it's like that at the beginning. Like, and you follow suit both sides. Just like that. See? Okay. Okay, we're on about the machine gun. I thought I'd do this whilst I'm waiting for other bits to dry. So as you can see, this is the machine gun off the real plane. Okay, and this is I'm making it from absolute scratch. You know, um, so basically what I've done with it is, uh, if I can bear with this, this is, I looked at it there to see roughly where it goes. I used other pictures as well. Roughly where it sits, where the handle sits in the, no the end of the nozzle. And it worked from judging it on that real plane there. So if we get it back to a bit bigger. So if you pan over to this, and basically, here we are, it works out from putting it against the plan, off the plan on the fuse, it works out seven inches long. That's the best way I've got it, judging by that picture. So it's not going to be an accurate, probably not to scale, but this is the best I can get. And then what I've done is I looked at the picture, kept looking at the picture and drew it out by hand in the ruler to roughly get it to looking similar to the one that you see on the picture. So to make this, basically, it, the main body of the gun is just cut out of a single piece of scrap balsa, roughly about that thick, which is about four mil thick, and that nice soft balsa so you cut it out with a scalpel. So all this bit here is all cut out with a scalpel, up to that bridge there, the whole flat piece. Then once I've done that, you've got that done, then you have, you have a bit of dowling rod, and you just cut it to the length and sand it, so you've got half the dowling rod, just use the sander down and put that on either side to get the, the bars. You keep looking at the picture, because there's one bar that goes across there. And then to make this ring, the, the magazine, basically you just find something like that round, draw it again round the uh, top of the um, thick piece of balsa, soft balsa. Cut it out, sand it round on the sander. So in this piece again, the flat bit, that's just made out of another piece of scrap, and all this is fiddly. And the handle, it's a bit of metal. This, this There's little trace marks, which I'll show you. So basically, all what you see here, and then I'll show you what I made something earlier. And then, ta -da! Mm. So here we have the machine gun. Okay? So, as you can see, it's more or less there to the size of that. So we'll just take you through it now. This is a, 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 an old checkers thing, which happened to be the right size to off a checkers game. So that's sat in there, and that's where you drill your holes for the dowling. That's a cocktail stick. That's your piece of dowling. A bit of scrap bolster just sanded with a Dremel. This is this uh, sticky metal tape stuff, which is brilliant. All right, yeah, that gives you the nozzle, the muzzle. This little bit here is off an old disused carbon brush. It just happens to be the right size for that circle. Bit of scrap there, that's a bit of brass tubing. Again there, that silver bit is just what looks on the gun, the lines off the, that sticky metal and sprayed on with adhesive. And then the top, this is dremeled out, basically just dremeled out with a dremel to get the effects of the magazine. 
And these are just bits of scrap bowl, so I've gently cut out and put all glued on. And then this handle, which is my bit I like. The handle bit is probably the hardest bit. That's just a bit of dowling rod sanded on a drill. And this is a bit of old scrap aluminium plate, soft aluminium. I've just screwed it and then it's nailed at the top there and there to give it the effect. And then just epoxy resin on the back. And the handles there, they're just to strengthen that a little bit because I keep, I've broke it about five times. And then guess what? The last thing to do on this now is uh, I've got the bracket will go over to make it in the real plane. It's just dremel out this bit and leave a trigger in there, which should be a little pin or something. And that will sit on the side of the fuselage, like so, on the other side actually. And it sits about there. So it, it looks a bit, now look at it, it's probably, it might look a bit too big for it. But you know what? That's the smallest I could make it, to be honest. It's, it's as fiddly as it was. But it'll do. And if people say it's too big, well, I'll say, well, that's it. Anyway, that's how it's going to be. Okay. Okay. I have to apologise because I'm doing this with one hand and trying to demonstrate it. So here is the cockpit of the Bristol FC. This is the real one. Okay, so me and my infinite wisdom thought I'm going to try and copy this as damn close as possible. And so I, when you see, I hope you probably think it's near enough. So anyway, you go, you've got that picture thing, and you've got the clocks and dials and bits and bobs. Okay, so that's that. And the lights. I always call that a light switch. I don't know half these clocks mean or whatever, you know. I don't know. I'm an expert, but there you go. So that, that's the real thing, okay? And this is my version. Okay? Right. So that is, so there's that there. I'm going to get airship. That's the same way it is. Okay? So, what I'm going to show you now is just how I went about this. So obviously, you've, you've already cut the shape of your cockpit out. And what I tend to do is, I've tried to put everything as close as possible to just demonstrate so my pin will come now. So this piece here, and this piece here, right, is an old pen inside of a big pen. And I cleaned the ink out and just chopped it down to length. So it was a hollow plastic tube to represent what was on the dashboard. Okay, this piece here, this piece here is a bit of old copper strip off a piano. And it's, right, which I cut with the secretaire things, it's a brilliant for that. So you just cut your strips thin and then everything's epoxied so the glues they use is epoxy and the super glue and the spray is just normal black plate you can either use car spray but I've, this just happens to be at hand and this is that plastic coat stuff which is brilliant okay so that's the spray one of the washers okay okay so i looked at it and thought right, and this piece here that the pin's at now the spit here this is a piece of just tubing i got from b and q because it was the only this place we've got around here all right, and just cut it with a hacksaw or, or dremel it off to the width you required. And then I filled it inside with a bit of uh, bolster dowel just to give it a bit of body. And then I put the dials on top. Right, I'll come to that. So that's, that's them. This little bit here and these little bits here. Okay, a little close up here. Right, these I believe are these. These are called like, I think these are what you put on clevises like, you know, and you put your, your, your arm through. So now, the reason I've used these is that these are all broken. When I got these, I got these at a, uh, one of those swap meet things. Big bag of junk, basically, and they don't work. So I thought, well, I'm going to keep them because it might come in handy, which they proved to have done. So it's a bit of, a, you just have to have a bit of imagination, really. So that was them. That plate there, that again is this copper plate, sprayed black. And when it's dry, you just scratch off that so you get the wording that's on there. So now we can see it, that's more. The map things, like you see on there, that's just basically paper, right, and just a bit of ink on it, and it's put in. Uh, all this is glued on first before we put anything on. Same with the dials, which I'm coming to now. This piece here is a collet, this collet here, right, and a little bit of uh, copper brass, or brass tubing, really thin brass tubing, to give the effect of the switch, okay. This here is uh, a bit of old, um, uh, what I use, worn down uh, cutting disc. Of that and I thought well that's handy so I just glued that on I uh, sprayed it black glued it on and then just used this stuff here this white marker thing which is brilliant All right and just put little ticks on it okay to make it look like a dial whatever it is okay this piece here to make this bit here this is a, a nut and it's a nut right and how I did it is as I screwed the nut onto a bolt put the bolt into a drill a power drill right on a vice and use the sandpaper to round it off, round the nut off, so you've got the round effect. 
okay and then I put the pardon me I epoxied in the pen in a pen bit and you can see and this again is a bit of brass wire copper tubing or brass wire then easy to bend that's all epoxied in this piece here to try and get the effect it looks like on there the ribby effect which is as close as I can get it because when you look on there in here that's like shower tubing so that was the closest I could get to that okay and it's easily bendable and that's epoxied in and uh, which is solder I use solder for that doubled it up and just twirled it on a pair of pliers to get that effect okay then now the clocks the pictures of the clocks these are just printed off the internet for nothing you just go on and just tap in quarter scale clocks and I'll show you a whole load and just print them off on the printer and you get a whole load of clocks and then just cut them out with a scalpel right gently cut them out with a scalpel and then they just get glued on right first underneath when you position everything that's what this is for you have a rough idea put everything where you want it rather than risk putting it on your nice piece you've already done this little piece here right that there is as you can see this is a sticky metal sticky imitation metal and it sticks like glue and then you just cut it you draw it out with a marker pen cut it out and then stick it on and then that white bit to imitate the white bit on there again is this pen stuff and when it dries it never comes off so basically that's it you know you know and then everything that's sprayed on it oh yeah and the washers these are just box standard washers from b and q or wherever you want to go and then i re-drilled them out to make them a bit wider to fit the clocks the big drill in a vice and, and you know on the okay so you got them a bit wider as needed be okay and sanded them back one last sanded back down so it was a bit thinner than that one so it you know you can't really see it on there but i did i don't know why i bothered and that's it basically and these are all epoxied in and use epoxy because if you put super glue on there or, oh yeah of course i've got one major thing each of these clocks you see i've got a little bit of plastic including that inside to give it a shiny effect which is just this acetate sheet that you buy from any any um stationery and you just cut them out with a scalpel or a pair of scissors if you're clever and like that and then again epoxy it just gentle little dabs of epoxy you don't use the super glue because it mists up all the um the uh acetate it really doesn't work so that's basically it and everything's epoxied in set to dry then that will fit in the dashboard so i hope that explains it um I mean, it, by all means, if you've got other materials to use, we'll just, you just have to look around your workshop and see what you think will fit closest to it. But I'm pleased with that, because, you know, it's... That, I might be able to get it out now. I'm still waiting for the glue to dry. Oh, no, there you go. So, amazing poxy. There you see. I would say that's as best I can get it. This is, don't forget, this is fifth scale, so, it's, you know, if it was quarter scale, it'd be damn sight easier to make the bits. So, yeah, I'm pleased with it. Okay? So the dummy engine, all right, this is the picture with the real plane obviously, so just looking at that there, this is, a, on this particular model this is a, 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 lot, a lot easier because it's a lot more cowling, uh, less exposed uh, on, on things like the puppet now, it's a lot further out, so we've got a bit of luck there. So looking at that, it's got a little concavey bit there and, and all this jazz, whatever, the cylinders and the whatever. All right, so that's the real thing. And if we pan over, here's my version of it. Right, I do need the glasses after all. Right, so how I've achieved this is basically, you get a top of a spray can, right, make sure it's empty, right, and when you spray it, when you drill the hole, make sure when you drill that little, little hole drill, it's not aiming at anything you want, not covered in paint, because the pressure inside the can just goes boom. But you have to anyway, so once it's all the pressure's gone, you, then you just dremel out, or, or you, you just dremel out the rim, which is this bit. Okay, see, that's the rim. You dremel out the rim, so you go down the side there, just cut it off. That's how I did it. And then you sand it, you, you, you get a sander on it, and that, that rim will fall off because they're all welded in. This is the bit you want, which is that bit there. If he follows the camera, that bit there. And that's the bit it looks like on the real engine. And then you get a piece of cheap, thin alley from my mate's dad, bless him, and, and uh, easy bendable. Right, and then you use the ring, it's off of there, on top, draw around it as a rough guide, okay, and the centre piece as well, that, that happens to be more or less exactly that bit there, that, that comes off, okay, so you've got that, and that just happened to fit around the actual re uh, engine on the plane, 
which is pretty cool. And then you just cut out a plate to get that effect that I showed you there underneath there. So you got that effect. And then you, you epoxy your resin in the top to the bottom plate there. All right, and if you look around, you've cut the hole out of the bottom. So you just cut enough so you can get these on. So as you turn it around, oh, that one's still a bit loose, it's still got to dry, but it'll get there. All right. And this is a bit from a, a, a car spares place sort of up on the road. Oh, yeah, it's a bit of tubing like that. That'll do because it's wood really cut. You, ch you need nine sections because nine cylinders. Chop them up. You obviously, you need five. The disposal one. Then cut it in half for the pair of scissors again. So you've got two halves. And just so happens that this one's black. Okay, and then a straw. And you paint it copper. McDonald's. Care of McDonald's. And you just paint them copper. And then... The beauty of it is because this is all uh, using epoxy resin, all right, five minute epoxy, you glue these in first, so they're nice and tight with a bit of weight on the other way around, like so, put the weight on it, see, and that, and then once they're all dry, there's me and no patience because that really does need done again, that, but we'll, we'll do it in a minute, right, and then you just squeeze these in between, like right, squeeze the sides, push them in because they're already copper painted, they'll hold it and then you dab it again with epoxy resin, or if you want to get rid of it, you hoo because it's crap, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then that'll be ready to cure. I'm going to have to put a bit more on there now because it's really getting tired. But we'll do it, all right? And then it's ready, as you turn it around, it's then ready to go on to the front of the uh, plane, which will be another video. Okay, so that's similar to what that is there. Okay, it's only something rough. I mean, if you really wanted to go mad, you could put the, the wires in next, but that's beyond. There's no point in this, it's so small. Okay, this is what I to show you about the engine, so if we pan over to the model, okay, so basically to get it long short, this engine is obviously a, a larger engine than what's specified for the model, but I always put a little bit of engine in because uh, when I detail stuff and that, there's extra weight added uh, through different things and that, you know, so anyway, this is the only engine I had at the time, so it's best to put it in. So if we pan around, I'll move the fuse so the cameraman can see, obviously with this, They've had to cut out the hole in the back. Uh, for an example, if we use this is from another model, but as you can see, this is so you can allow, get the engine to set back in. A bit like the old days when you used to shoehorn uh, en bigger engines into your smaller car, like a, a, a Ford Escort Mark One, say, mm. and you try to put a V6 in it or a two litre engine, Pinto engine. You know, you have to move things around and, and uh, cut holes where they shouldn't be. So that's just basically the same sort of thing in my eyes. So anyway, so basically it's a bone box standard. This is the one that I cut out, and so you always make a spare, and in my case two spares, because it's thin, like I said in the previous video, so you get a bit of weight on the front. So you, basically, you, 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 first thing to do is, it's obviously you get your engine, the hints of why I said about the crosses, you know where your uh, dead center is. So that your engine has to sit on top of that line, but so in order to do that, you get whatever plate you're using, you put a piece under that, and you redraw the line. Oh, I could do it here, I suppose, this as a rough cut. There's your bottom end, because you know that's where your engine's got to sit. So you just draw a line under there. That's going to be your engine plate. So you've got the width there. And then once you've done that, you then, whatever bear, engine bearers you're using, so I threw mine away now. Say that's your engine bearer for our argument's sake. You know then that you've got to put that in. So before you do that, you put it up against the fuse, get it dead square where it's meant to be on the plan, and you set it up there. And then you draw your, you draw lines down the side of the fuse, for example. I mean, it's hard to do now because it's on, but you would your lines set the side of your fuse there. You, you've got it up against it, and you draw it square, so you know that you, where you're going to be sitting the front former plate. Okay, F1 as they call it. Okay, and then that's when you mark out your positions where you're having your engine bearers there. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's a bit larger because they're going to be secured against the fuse. Like I'll show you in a minute. So there, in, that's the first start of it. That's how basically you get your, your general start of where, you know, obviously the engine bearers be down there. Not up there. Right. So there's your engine bearers go in there. They go in first before you put the plate on. Okay, so you've got it all lined up. And then then once you've got them lined up, that's, you then, it's, a lot of this is trial and error. You get whatever size engine you're using, you've got to draw, put the engine against it, draw out a rough cut so you can get the engine to fit in and then once you've got the engine fitting in then you have to move because this is a four stroke you've got this stick, horrible thing sticking out if you've got a just engine they'll give you a 45 degree bracket which I might actually get 
so you can actually get it within the cowl rather than it sticking out to make it look ugly. So, but at this moment in time, I've done it this way just to show that in case people don't do that way, that's the option to go. Okay, but this bracket they buy, they're about 40 quid, so you, you know, just for a bit of tubing, threaded tubing, it's for 90 degree angle, so you can get it in within inside the cow, so it doesn't look so ugly. But for now, it's, that's how I've done it, just to show people. Okay, so you've got that in, then you've cut out your whole section like I've done on that one, for example. So you've got your needle valve, which has to be set back, obviously, you know, because the reason it is all the engine set back is because this cow is only so wide. And you don't want to lose the effect of the real plane, you know. So that's why I've kept it as narrow as possible. <coughs> and you can always sand these off just to get it in nice. Okay, so it's there in the right place. You've made a hole there for your needle valve to stick out once you put your sheeting on. Right, that's a plus, that's a must actually. And then you've got, so you've got all that done. Then what you do is, is what I've done even, is you build a second former to go around the back. This is to cover the sheeting. So when you put your sheeting on, you've got, it runs true with the edge of the front former, if that makes sense, you know. So when you put your, any sheet, in, you know, just for example, you just use this as a bit. So, you know, you put your sheet on, so like so, you know. This is not the right sheet for it, but you know, see what I mean? So you've got that, so it'll run true with that, because that's where your cowling's going on. Okay, so you've got that like that. Okay. And then you come at your second former. So you've got your engine in, you've bolted it all in, You've got everything running through. Then next thing you need to look at is, obviously you've got your throttle cable there, the throttle linkage. So you've got to make sure that one thing is, so you've got adequate space for that. So when you put this second former in, which I believe on here is F2, what's that goes, you've got to all allocate holes for the petrol tank. This is the petrol tank. So you, you measure the petrol tank, basically you just put it against the former. And we've got one here, look. Right, former. You, you, you've got your former fitted in nicely and you just draw around the petrol tank, cut it out, and that size fits. And then you make a hole for you where your throttle cable's gonna go, your throttle linkage. Because I'm using a wire version, the old fashioned way. That'll do. And that's the way that goes. And then glue that in with PVA or epoxy. And then there goes your petrol tank goes in like so. See? That's there as a guide to make sure everything's true. So that's basically that for now. Your engine bearers, they're cut. You, you obviously, once your engine bearers go in, it's just that's hardwood. That is basically hardwood from being even. And you obviously you cut it so it doesn't affect your uh, pro, uh, propeller when it's going on and your uh, front of your cow. So, like I said, you can always trim that back, sand it back, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. So that's basically it, ladies and gentlemen. That's more or less how it works. So after that, then once you've got all this sorted, I'd say to do this first. So I'll probably put in the servo tray next to make sure I've got room for that, you know, access to it once you take the wing off, which means you turn, the, turn it upside down and you put your tray in so that you can get to it once you take the wing off, you know, if you need to. So you've got room for, to get your tank out and, and your servos. Access is the word, the flexible enemy. Another little trick I've done is, is that if you notice there, I always forget personally whether it's shut or closed, whatever. so what I've done is I write a little there, an arrow there, so if the arrow's pointing that way, that means that it's, the, it's opened, see, just to remind me because I always forget, just silly things like that for me, but that's how I am. Right, so and then looking at the plan, I've changed that but I'll come to that in the next bit, but I've redrew the formers out off of this one just to put it in separate places to make it easier for when I do the sheeting and the cockpit bit but that's another video okay so i hope that helps if, we, if i'm going too fast or whatever and please tell me okay thanks a lot bye those magnificent men those magnificent men